We left off last time by doing a redirect from our start servlet to our results servlet. And we noted a couple of things that as we did that, we did land on the servlet that we wanted, but the URL was shown. And that gave the user the ability to see that actual hidden servlet URL that we don't necessarily want them to see. So we asked the question at that time, is it possible that we could move from one servlet to another or from one servlet to a page without actually having to show the user what URL they're actually on? And of course the answer to that is yes, and that's what we're going to learn this time. We'll do that with an object called the request dispatcher. For this example, we're still going to land on a results servlet, so we won't have to create a new results page. But we do need a new results start page that will get us to where we're going. So let's go ahead and create a new servlet. And we'll call this one start servlet 2. And of course, nothing is going to be fancy about this. We'll just go ahead and next through, and we can leave the URL mappings, and we'll leave do get and do post, even though we'll still continue to only use do get at this point. And here we have our start servlet 2. So we have our mapping in place, and our servlet do get is where we're going to go. So before I do anything else, what I'm going to do is expand the code here so that we have a bigger view of the code, so it's easier for us to see. So what we need is the javax.servlet request dispatcher. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a request dispatcher object, and we'll call it dispatcher. And we'll say, let's get that from the request.get request dispatcher. Now before you note, we used the response when we were doing the send redirect. Now we're actually using the request. And these are just the request and response objects being passed around by the web system. So the request is already in place, and now we're going to get the dispatcher from that request itself, and we have to point it to a link. So here we need a link to dispatch to when we decide to use the forward method. And you'll also note the request dispatcher will have to be added, so we'll do that in a moment. But let's first grab that link that we had so much trouble with last time. So here is our start servlet from before. So let's grab our results servlet.do link with our project name because certainly this will be the same as what we were doing last time and we don't want to have a problem like we had last time. So here's our path to our servlet that we're going to redirect to, ultimately dispatch to. And here, let's go ahead and import the request dispatcher from javax.servlet so that that will work. And you can see that up here that is added. Another nice thing that the Eclipse environment does for us is it says, hey, you have a variable you haven't used, which is very important because if you run this now, it's not going to do anything. In fact, we could do that if you want. You could run it and it would show that it would just land on start servlet 2 and do absolutely nothing. And you'd be wondering, why isn't it dispatching? Well, the reason is because we never actually did anything. We just pointed this dispatcher object to the new URL, but we actually need to use the dispatcher object to move there. So let's go ahead and do the dot forward method on the dispatcher, and we can simply pass the same old request and response objects that we already are passing around. And so if we had done anything to alter their state, that change would have been propagated now forward. And also that shows that we can do whatever we need to at this point up to this point in the server, in the servlet, and then go ahead and do the forwarding, and we'll still be on track. So now that that's in place, our code is compiling. Let's go ahead and close it down here a little bit so that we can see the servlet and the server. And let's go ahead and actually just close all the others so that we only have that one window open. And let's run our start servlet too. And of course this is going to work, right? So let's restart our server and find out. Oh no, it didn't work. Well, why didn't it work? Well, here's the difference. When we grabbed the response and said response.send redirect, the response.send redirect doesn't really know as much about the underlying structure of the application, and it simply needs a URL that's valid. Well, without the Hello World servlet project name, the URL was invalid, so it failed. With this one, with the request dispatcher, we have a little bit more understanding of where we're at in the system. We've already sent a request previously, and so all it needs to do is know the actual mapping of that servlet or page that we want to send to, and we can go ahead and do that. So the thing that we tried to do last time is actually what we need to do this time. We need to have the project name removed from our actual URL. And we only need to have the path to the actual mapping for that servlet. And again, if you wanted to double check that, you could just grab the path here, or if you had set the path in the web XML file, you could grab it from there. And then you would use that same path, just make sure it's the same. I'm going to go ahead and trust that it's the same and save that, and once again now, let's run our start servlet and see if it works now with the correct mapping. We'll finish this up, restart our server, and our results are received. So it looks like everything's good to go. 
So our request dispatcher object knows a little bit more about the container structure and the fact that it knows how to get to the starting place that it was at. And we were able to use that mapping for the actual servlet to show it here. The other thing to note is, of course, we never moved off the URL for our start servlet 2, even though the code behind the scenes was actually run from the results servlet. So that accomplished our task of keeping that URL from being shown to the user.